Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello and welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Lauren Bolander with Captain Rick Murphy and tonight we're going to talk piers, jetties, and surf. And we're going to also talk about one of your favorite places, the fabulous Florida the Keys. The fabulous Florida Keys. We've got the man himself, Andy Newman, in here. Yeah, brought him in-house to talk about it for the big night. Yep. Yeah. But wait, before we get started, we have a big reason to celebrate around here. Captain Rick and our very own Captain Jeffrey Page from the Central West region took home top honors at a tournament this weekend, right? Absolutely. It was the Florida Pro Redfish West Coast Team of the Year division, am I right? Yeah, we won the actual Team of the Year, the West Coast, as well as they had this Sarasota event, and we won that too. So, Look great job. Jeffrey did a great job of being prepared, and my hat's totally off to him because it's all it was all him. Yeah? Yeah. But you know, Lauren, I got to tell you, we talk about the theme species every week, and as we ask our viewers to do, they send in some pictures from Facebook, and the first picture we got is we got little Colin. Look at him, man. He's all jacked up about fishing on the Sebastian Inlet, literally with a Jack Creval. Then we have Elijah, who is snooked up as well. Look at that big <laughs> snook. That snook is a monster. Bigger than he is. And then last but not least, we've got two anglers or an angler standing on the end of one of the jetties with the most beautiful sunset. And I got to tell you, way to go, guys. Keep sending in those pictures like you do every That was a nice picture. Week. Absolutely. Straight off your Instagram page, Rick. Okay. You're artsy like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and kick off our night with your partner in greatness, Captain Jeffrey Page. Jeffrey, you have a whole lot of piers and jetties in your Central West region, don't you? Oh, do we ever. <laughs> in the Central West uh, region, we have an abundance of piers and jetties and an okay surf fishery. Starting from the north, and probably the most famous and longest pier, maybe in the state, is the Skyway Pier, which stresses stretches across Tampa Bay from St. Pete all the way over to Palmetto Bradenton with a big gap in the middle. And what it is, you guys, it's the old Skyway Bridge that was rammed in 1981 uh, during a big foggy morning by a big barge. So they took out the middle area and used all that rubble for artificial reefs and rock piles. But they left both the uh, other lanes open and you can literally drive your car out to where you want to fish. There's bait stands on both piers and it's not uncommon. Some of the species they catch on it are Spanish and king mackerels, mango snappers, groupers, as well as seasonal tarpons, and usually year-round sharks. Like I said, there's bait stands on both the piers, the north and the south pier, and the, the suggestion that I give to anyone who wants to go out and try it is, maybe go out there one day and just drive out there and don't even bring any tackle and see what the guys are using. And a lot of times the pier fishermen are very helpful, very friendly, and they're going to show you what's working, what's not working, how you land fish and all that stuff, because it's a whole other game than being in your boat. Um, working our way south, there's the Anna Maria Piers, which stick out in the inlet there on the way into Anna Maria, the Braden and City Pier, as well as the Tony Soprito Pier in Sarasota. When you get down towards Venice, there's the Venice Jetties, which is really good fishing north and south, Nokomis being on the north and the city of Venice on the south. And then the Venice Fishing Pier out in the Gulf, which stretches a good three, four hundred yards out into the Gulf. And then finally, the El Joe Bean Pier, which is at the mouth of the Mayaka River, where some really big snook are taken during the uh, late fall, winter, and early spring months. As far as surf, we catch a lot of snook, whiting, flounders, and pompano on light tackle spinning gear right along the troughs close to the beach. Not right. so much those big, ordinary surf gear guys use offshore. All right, tell species me about more. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me about the redfish, Jeffrey. Right, species too, redfish. As you know, Rick, there's lots of schools around, most of them in the upper slot range, with a few big oversized bunches roaming the bay. To the south, look for them on the outer bars of Turtle and Bull Bay, as well as on the flats of the west side of Lemon Bay, quarter ounce weedless gold spoon, and the new saltwater assassin, five inch jerkbait in the mama's 14 carat pattern on a silver quarter ounce hook up jig works real well. I've got a photo tonight of three gentlemen that we met during our tournament Saturday from Bradenton. Starting from the left is Frank Lippert, and then the two guys center and right are Jake and Austin Glunk, and they fished. They were fishing on the same flat we were, but of course they were wading and in their kayaks, and they knew that you were Rick Murphy. It was pretty neat meeting those guys. It was really awesome. All right, let's go offshore, Buck. Offshore gag groupers. 
According to Captain Chris Seeger, nice keeper gags are being taken off hard bottom and structure and ledges in that 60 to 100 foot range. The key has been, like it's always been all summer, is marking the big bait stacks close to the bottom and then getting down a live pinfish or pilchard. I've got a photo tonight of Jimbo Denton from Ocala with a real nice gag he caught. And then Species 2 Amberjack, now that the AJ season is open, some really nice AJs are being kept, caught and kept over the wrecks and springs in the 120 to 140 foot range. Live blue, blue runners and big hand sized pinfish if you're going to live bait. And then if you're going to use artificials, the pink or the chartreuse Williamson Vortex jig. Really good bait for those big AJs. Real quick, Marina Jack's weigh in this Saturday, 3 p.m., the Suncoast Saltwater Shootout, Billfish offshore and inshore. All right, thanks, Jeffrey. We're going to go ahead and get to Star Tron hotspots from the Central West region. Inshore, nighttime snook. Fish the dock lights and bridges with free line shrimp or DOA glow shrimp between Stickney Point Bridge south to Venice Jetty. And then offshore, mangrove snapper. Nice mangs holding on the wrecks and ledges in an 80 to 120 feet. Live pinfish or pilchers is going to be the best bet, Lauren. All right, way to start it off, teammates. Man, we did good. <laughs> Let's turn now to the CCA Central East with Captain Jim Ross. Captain Jim, you say inlets are a pretty smart place to start where you are. Oh, I'm telling you right now, the Central East region is on fire. Land-based anglers have all kinds of big fish to tangle with that are usually reserved for guys that are kind of out fishing in the boats and that sort of thing. Now, right now, Sebastian and Pods Inlet are the two inlets that you really want to get to if you're a land-based angler. The small bullet run is going on right now, and that annual migration is putting on a show. Fish are jumping all through them right now. So anglers that are fishing from the, the piers and the jetties in particular are getting to see this. But we also have a lot of action along the beaches as well, and those surf guys will take advantage of that because it's a great way for them to catch a variety of big species as well while they're standing on the sand. It's snook, tarpon, Spanish mackerel, sharks, jack, redfish, and of course there's all kinds of other stuff that follow these schools of mullet all, all up and down the beaches. Uh, right now, though, it, it seems like the north side of the jetty seems to be the best place to be, especially on a mid-incoming tide. And right now, the one-half ounce to one-ounce hookup jig is a great, great lure to throw. They're big crocodile-type spoons. And one of my favorites, the Rapala Extract 12. And if you want to, you know, if none of those work for you, dip net or cast net or whatever it takes to get you a couple of those bait fish and put them on a four and a six hot size of BMC circle up. Right now, piers and jetties are the best places to be. Now, if you're inside the inlets, some of the popular uh, jigs called the flare hawk jigs also work in my CCA Central East region. All right, Jim, before we go any further, I'm going to take a look at the Navionics from your region. Now, Captain Jim, one of the things that he talked about was certainly the fish that are roaming up and down the beach. Now, Captain Jim says you got snook, uh, also some really big redfish all in here in, inside of the inlet. But more importantly, just outside of the inlet, out here off of the buoy, there's been a lot of big kingfish. Now, remember, this past weekend, he told me that down along this area here, they had over 10 people bit by sharks. So, guys, let's take a look at the next uh, Navionics, and as you can see, the sonar sounding as the bait comes down the beach, guys, just like this, the sharks are going to be following those baits. So as it gets closer in, you need to understand that potentially if the water's dirty, you could potentially be shark bait. So go ahead, Jim, let's go ahead and tell me what else is happening in your region. <laughs> well, it's a good place not to surf, that's for sure, but a great place to fish, Rick. You know, right now we've also got trout on the inshore uh, waters, especially if you're working the docks between New Smyrna and Edgewater. Uh, the lighted docks at night and the rocky areas along those ledges are holding good numbers of fish. Live pigfish, jumbo shrimp, or fingerling mullet are all really good choices right now on a hookup jig. Uh, also, the extra plugs or the saltwater assassin 4 inch sea shad in the needlefish color, the Cajun croaker color, or the chicken on a chain color patterns. They're taking fish all up and down that stretch, plus on the flats of the Indian and Banana Rivers as well. And you want to rig those saltwater assassin tails on a one-quarter to one-eighth ounce hookup jig head. Now, our average trout's running about one to three pounds, but there's some six-pounders out there running around as well. And heading offshore, we've got uh, king mackerel, as you were just talking about. There's some good-sized king mackerel coming in right now because they're following those bait pots up and down the beach. But you can also find them out on the 70 to 90 foot reef. That's where the majority of the kings are caught throughout the year in my region. And anglers have to do a little bit of searching from day to day, but you know, once you find the reef that they're on, 
is staying on. Live bait fish, obviously those pogies and those mullet that you see coming down the beach are the right bait to use right now. And our average fish is running about 14 to 22 pounds, but we've had 20 mackerel up into 30 and even over 30 pound range. And I've got a really cool shot here of Daniel Delator and his sister Natalie with a great Central East King mackerel. And that fish came from 52 feet of water just outside of the Bethel Shoal area down at Sebastian. Now, our last species we're going to talk about is not really an offshore species per se, but we catch them along the beaches, and those tarpon uh, are also around the piers and the jetties. And those fish right now are just busting up the live bait as those bait fish are cruising down the beaches trying to make their way southward. So you can slow troll the live mullet or, or a pogey as well near those bait pods, and you're going to get some attention. You want to rig those on a VMC 7385 circle hook. That's... Uh, the best hook I've found to use on the tarpon. It, my favorite right now is, is the 9-aught, uh, but you can use a 7-aught to 9-aught, depending on the size of your bait fish or, or the mullet that you have to use them. Right now, our beach tarpon, Rick, are running between 75 pounds and about 100 pounds, but there's some 150 pounders out there in the Central East CCA region this week. And I just wanted to throw a big congratulations out there to you and uh, Jeffrey Page. You know, guys have been doing it longer, stronger, and harder than anybody else on the circuit and have more to show for it. And it just proves that you guys have exactly what it takes as far as a teammate goes and as far as putting your homework in to catch those fish on this tournament. So congratulations. Well, that's, nice, that's nice of you to say. Thank you so much, Jim. Great report this week. I'm going to go ahead and get to the hot spots from the CCA Central East region. Inshore, fish the jetties, piers, and beaches with live fingerling mullet, for a mixed bag of bluefish, snook, jacks, and other predator species. And then offshore, gag groupers are hitting live and cut baits on the 21 and 27 fathom ridges, Lauren. See, making everybody proud around Man, here. How Very about it? Nice. nice. Yeah, you guys stay with so us nice. on the other side of the break. That's we're gonna nice. head to the fabulous Florida Keys, and Mr. Newman is gonna share some of his expertise on this great destination. Don't miss it. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer, best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company, Chevy, the IGFA, conservation through education, get your hands wet, and Olukai. He's a 20 years straight, get to work on time. He's a love one woman for all his life. Everybody knows he ain't just tough. He's strong. The all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has masterfully captured the wonder of marine wildlife in his artwork. Now he's sharing his inspiration with the Florida Lottery by creating 12 exclusive images for the Collector Series Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Game, featuring a top prize of $50,000 and a second chance opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate the beauty and riches of Florida with Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Games today. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. When the Spanish explorers discovered Isla Morada, they called it Purple Isles. Today, they discover such a rich palette of diversions and delicacies, they'd definitely be at a loss for words. Isla Morada, in the Florida Keys.
time for the news and notes from the FWC. September 14th is Bear Creek Park's 15th annual Fish for the Fun of It at Bear Creek Recreational Complex in Orlando. September 21st is Barnett Park's 15th annual Fish for the Fun of It at Barnett Park Frog Pond in Orlando. And September 28th is Turkey Lake's 14th annual Public Lands Day at Bill Frederick Park in Orlando. You can always find more information at myfwc.com. Right now we're going over to the guys for Off the Deep Ends. We're here, the annual <laughs> Florida there. Keys. Sorry about that. The Florida Keys show at the Jägermeister <laughs> workbench. And Andy, there's nobody better to talk about fishing the bridges and fishing in the Florida Keys than you. So thank you for coming to the show. So let's talk a little bit about what goes on with all those bridges in the Florida Keys. Well, you know something, Rick? Of course, the Florida Keys are the sport fishing capital of the world. We've got tremendous stable of guides, charter boats, backcountry boats offshore, you name it, it's there. But there's also those bridges there too. And you know something? He might not have known it, but more than 100 years ago, when Henry Flagler built the overseas uh, railroad and built those bridges, there, uh, he actually built the very first fish attracting devices, otherwise known as fads. You're absolutely right. You know, the cool part about the Florida Keys, Andy, is not just the bridges, but it's also the reefs it's the diving, it's the sightseeing, it's the lighthouses. And, and you know, Andy, the cool part is that the diversity of species that you have and those bridges are essentially the dividing line between the Gulf of Mexico, Florida Bay, as well as the Atlantic Ocean. You're absolutely right. You know something, I always talk about the diversity of the fishery and especially in the springtime, you can go offshore, catch those dolphins, catch those billfish, come back in the same day and go on the backcountry for tarpon, bonefish. Where else can you do that, Rick? There's no other place. And Andy, let's talk real quickly about the bridges themselves. The thing that's so cool about the bridges, what I see, is that if you're a young kid, it's a great exposure. You can take the kids down to the bridge, do a little bit of fishing. When the kids get tired, they simply go pile back up in the car, go to one of the local restaurants, have a great time. Let me ask you though, Andy, when you first go to the Keys and you don't know exactly how to fish the bridges, what would you suggest people do? First of all, you know something, that Florida Keys Overseas Highway, there are 42 bridges over the water. My best recommendation, go into that local tackle shop in the area that you're fishing. First of all, if you don't have a rod and reel, they're likely to have rod and reel rentals for you. They can sell you bait, bait and they'll give you that local knowledge that you need to successfully fish those bridges. Get that fishing license if you need it. You gotta have that fishing license, okay? A lot of folks come down to the Keys and they, they think, you know what, I can just go fishing on the bridge without the license. FWC watches those bridges out. You got to have that saltwater license. One thing that I think is really important, Andy, is certainly we got to talk about the protocol about boaters versus people fishing on the bridges. Now, guys, let me tell you, as a boater, when you see their lines hanging in the water, hanging down current, give them room. They certainly wouldn't want to be running over your fish over your baits. Give them room. At the same time, if you're fishing the bridge and you see a boat approaching, you know he's going to go under the bridge, wait until he passes by because certainly nobody loves a big sinker coming in their hot wheelhouse. And, and you know something? Best thing to do, you know, you can tell the, the section of the bridge where the boats go through, stay away from those areas in terms of your fishing. All right, I'm going to give everybody a secret. Listen, guys, when you're down there, you're fishing those bridges, Make sure you fish the down current side. So channel two on the incoming tide, great bridge to fish because you're not gonna have the new bridge in your way. If the tide changes, you might wanna go to channel five because then you're not gonna be, actually your line will be down current and you don't have the new bridge. But exactly. if you happen to hit it wrong, you know what? Fish between the embutments and the pylons and fish it short. Remember that guys, that'll help you catch some of those big tarpon and also, um, you know, all the other things, groupers. Now tell me about a featured tournament that you got coming up in the Florida Keys. We do, we do. Um, we ha you know something, many inside viewers are gonna remember the late Jim Mandich. He was a tight end for the Miami Dolphins, Rick, from 70 to 1977. He was also a popular Florida sports broadcaster. Jim also loved fishing and began his Mad Dog 
Bandage Fishing Classic some six years ago. This year's classic, October 16th to the 19th in Ala Mirada. And there's a top boat prize of $5,000 cash for the team scoring the highest, highest cumulative weight of the tournament's targeted species, dolphin, kingfish, tuna, and wahoo. Among expected participants are former Miami Dolphins players. Rick, now, there's much more details on the Mandage Classic, as well as many other events and tournaments in the Keys. It's on the Florida Keys website. Rick, what's that website? It's F right up there, by the way. FLA-keys.com. FLA-keys.com or FLA-keys.com as well, too. Now, I think we got some more tournaments to talk about, so Lauren, why don't you fill us in on those? I'll be glad to do it. We're going to take a look and see what else is going on down there. First up, it's the Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge scheduled for September 27th to the 29th in Key Largo. This tournament targets trout, snook, and redfish and provides anglers the opportunity to fish continuously from the conclusion of the captain's meeting to two hours prior to the awards banquet. Next, it's the Women's Fall Fly Classic, set for October 1st through the 3rd in Isla Mirada. This is an all-release fly tournament targeting bonefish, redfish, snook, and tarpon. Also, the Robert James Sales Bay Bone Celebrity Tournament, scheduled for October 11th through the 13th in Key Largo, is the second of three Keys tournaments that fundraises for cystic fibrosis research and treatment. The Bay Bone targets permit and bonefish. And finally, the Isla Mirada All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship, set for October 13th through the 16th, it features prizes for the most releases in bait, artificial and fly divisions, as well as for the largest bonefish and permit. Always a whole lot going on in the wow. Keys, right, Rick? Man, you, so, how do you have any the breath left? Uh, you know, it's practice. All right. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> in anticipation for this huge show we had, I took the time to go down and check out the Keys for myself, and I got to hang out with Captain Randy, and I even got in a little yellowtail snapper fishing Did while I was at it. Did you bring any pack? Well, I may have. Take a look. All right. Captain Randy, there's a reason the Florida Keys is one of the top destinations for fishing in the world, right? Absolutely. This place from Key Largo to Key West has everything you could want for, for fishing, for diving, inshore, offshore, the reefs. It doesn't matter if it's Key Largo or Key West. You've got 110 miles of keys and hotels and restaurants and, and places to fish. A lot of these restaurants will let you bring your catch in and they'll fix it right up for you. You can have it for dinner from the water to your plate, same day. Almost every restaurant does that. Hook That's and cook. They call hook it. and cook. That's <laughs> what I was looking for. You know, the fall, the summer used to be our slow time. Um, we don't really get a slow time anymore because people want to have that sun and fun. They want to dive. They want to take their vacations here. So it's really turned into the, the best kept secret we've had has been the summer and fall fishing here. Fishing's great. Hotels aren't booked up. Restaurants you can go to without a wait. You can get out on the highway without having to wait 15 minutes for the traffic to go by. It's really been kept quiet for a long time. I think people are starting to catch right. on to, hey, there's stuff to do here all year long. Absolutely. It makes it the uh, perfect time. Anytime is the perfect time Absolutely. to visit the, the fabulous Florida Keys. <laughs> You know, I love the fact that you were cheating on me. What? With Randy. Well, he asked nicely. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? It's just that easy. <laughs> Man, I don't know. No, honestly, we had an awesome time out on the water. And I can tell you, Captain Randy is the boss of the Keys for a reason. He makes an excellent guide to that La Jolla, Florida Keys region. Awesome. The best. And as a matter of fact, he even stuck around to talk to me where he's not even sick of me yet. Uh, hey, Randy, long time no talk. Hey, fish fans, <laughs> good evening. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got out of the water. We had some great fun, and we uh, got some good fish to eat that night as well. You know, we don't really have uh, jetties down in the Keys, but we do have bridges, and we do have some shorelines that you can fish throughout the Keys. Now, the Keys are 110 miles long, so there's a lot of traveling down through the Keys, and there's some specific areas where they've made the bridges, the old bridges, into fishing piers. Uh, like Channel 2 Bridge, Channel 5 Bridge. These are toward the Upper Keys, Long Key Bridge. And as you go down throughout the, the Keys, you're going to find at each end of the bridges, there's areas where you could pull off the side of the road and you could throw a line and you could fish. And some people even dive around some of these areas. So there's no shortage of fishing. If you don't have a boat, you can certainly fish from the shore and you can also fish on the bridge. Now, like anything, the conditions if you're trying to catch a, a certain fish, whether it's a snook or a tarpon or a mangrove snapper, there are going to be conditions that's going to favor your success a lot more. For example, if you want to go snook fishing on a bridge 
and you're going to go and there's a strong current, it may be too strong to fish. So you need to understand the tides, wait for that tide to slow down, and that slower period, maybe even the slack tide, might be the best hour of fishing you got. So you want to kind of plan your condition and recognize your tides before you go to some of these bridges and you'll have some excellent fishing. All right, well, let's stay in shore, Buck. You know, we're talking about bone fishing. It's that time of year. We've got plenty of bone fish throughout the Keys. You know, we don't talk about the lower keys in Key West very much, but they do have some excellent, excellent bone fishing down that way, especially this time of year. They just finished up one of the premier red bone tournaments in Key West, and I think Captain Dave Dinkert and his angler caught 10 bone fish and two permit and a tarpon in a couple of days. So the bone fishing down that way here again, they had good conditions, they had nice weather, they had good incoming tide, and uh, those bonefish down there are certainly plentiful uh, as well as they are throughout the Keys, but there's, there's times and there's conditions that you want to target your areas for your best fishing. And that's what you really need to learn about bone fishing, especially. It's a timing thing, a lot more than a secret place to be. Um, the offshore fishing still, the yellowtails, we talk about yellowtail fishing because it's it's very consistent, it's happening right now, it's good, it's been good, it's great eating, it's a lot of fun. As Lauren knows, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not real difficult when you put your chum out and they come to you to drop a line in the water and wind these things in. Now, they were cooperating, and if you anchor your boat 50 to 70 feet right now and find some current, you want some water moving, and that's current that's gonna take your chum behind the boat if you don't have any chum and it's sinking to the bottom, it's a difficult condition to go yellowtail, and you may not catch any. If you have current, it's more favorable. What I like to do is get the chum started. I'll throw out a little uh, horse oats and try to get these fish up off the bottom to come to the surface. And once I see them, I very slowly start catching one or two at a time, and I never put more than two or three rods in the water at one time to keep those fish happy and be patient, and you will catch your limit. All right, what else you got for me, bud? The sword fishing this time of year becomes real popular because a lot of guys are going offshore looking for a dolphin, looking for debris, and you're out in that 15, 1,800 feet, so you may as well drop down and try for one of these swordfish. They're, they're great fun. Captain Nick Stancic on the B&M out of Bud Mary's, one of the pioneers down here, he does it all the time, and he's very successful doing it. I know he's been catching some fish in the 200-pound range, um, in that 1,500 to 1,800 feet, mostly on strip baits. He's taking a barracuda, a dolphin belly, a bonita strip, something like that, and he's putting it down, and that's what he's getting his bites on. Now, it takes a lot of tackle. It takes a, a, a big rod. It takes braided line. So the process to do this is uh, rather extensive, but certainly the reward of catching one of these broadbill swordfish in the daytime to see him jump and to see him in the water is a sight to see. Oh uh, man, what a great region of Florida Keys, La Jolla region. Randy, thanks for the report. We're gonna go ahead and get to the hot spots from the Florida Keys. Captain Randy says, inshore, you wanna try redfish. Look on the top of the flats on the low parts of the tide and move to the shorelines as the water level gets high. Try small pinfish or medium-sized pinfish on a quarter ounce hookup jigs. And then offshore, yellowtail, anchoring 55 to 70 feet of water where you can have good current, chum, and then throw your oats as you wait for, to see them. Then drift back a small piece of ballyhoo on a 16th ounce hookup, and that'll catch those yellowtails. Right, Lauren? Yeah, he's a smart guy. He made me even look good. Not, Everybody no. does. <laughs> what? <laughs> when we return, we're going to check in with Captains Mike Holiday and Russell Theron. But first, we're headed back down to the Keys with Bob Stokey with a great recipe for conch egg rolls. You're going nice. to want to see this. Stay with us. Nice. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Crokies, made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa, see what's out there. And Lumber Rock. Introducing Helmaster, 
Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. At highway speeds, things can get pretty windy. That's why the Chevrolet Cruze Eco has active aero grille shutters that close at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics. With an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon highway, the Chevrolet Cruze Eco offers the best highway fuel economy of any gas engine in America. Always thinking of ways to give you more while using less. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records or time on the water with the family or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Our seafood chef extraordinaire, Bob Stokey, is back from the Conk Republic. Nice. nice. He's here with a conch recipe. Let's take a look. Oh, you Just got wait till you see it. It's gonna be, conch. yeah, isn't that cute? Like take a look, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to Marker 88, Alan Rada, Florida Keys. Check out this weather. Absolutely amazing time of the year down here. Today, I'm making for you guys conch egg rolls. What goes better with the Florida Keys than conch? But don't worry, if you don't have conch, you can use shrimp, okay? So what I did is I took some conch, I sauteed it up earlier this afternoon, a little bit of soy sauce, some white wine, salt, and pepper, all right? We're just gonna take our wonton wrapper right here, rub a little egg wash right on the edges of there, okay? Be a little liberal, guys. Don't, don't be too shy with this stuff, all right? From there, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of our conch mixture to it, all right? You want to pile it up, but maybe not go too crazy. I have a little bit of kimchi that I chopped up, a little bit of scallions, some carrots, and of course, some fresh Napa cabbage, all right? Put all that in there, all right? Now all we're gonna do is just roll it up, roll in the ends. It should be a little bit like an envelope when it's kind of ready to go, all right? Roll it up, look at that baby. From there, we're just gonna take these, drop them into the fryer. What you might wanna do is leave these in the refrigerator just for a little bit right before you're ready to go. Remember, you don't have to cook them too long because the conch's already cooked inside, all right? When you're done, this is what you're gonna get. Check those babies out. Crispy conch deliciousness, right here from the Florida Keys. Check out the website for the recipe. We'll see you guys soon. Damn that man, Damn. every single time he does this. Now I'm hungry. I know, well, and I don't, I don't want to rub it in, but I got to try it. Oh, and you they, were, the they were just stuff. like mostly awesome. Stuff. Oh. All right, <laughs> let's move along now. Captain Mike That's Holiday is in the East region, and Mike, your region has some really nice options on our theme this week, right? We do, starting in Palm Beach County, we have the Lake Worth and Juno Beach Piers, which are great spots for everything from snook and pompano to mackerel and snapper. Then you have the four inlets. Boca, Boynton, Lake Worth, and Jupiter, and those are just snook and tarpon thoroughfares, and they also hold a lot of snapper on the slack tides. And then in Martin County, the beach is a place to be. Started Hope Sound Beach, which is known for the great snook population and great pompano fishing, but also for its run of bluefish permit and bonefish. Then there's Tiger Shores, The Rocks, Bob Graham Beaches. They all host a variety, uh, whiting, pompano, snook, and snapper. Then you can park at Bathtub Beach and walk to the St. Lucie Inlet to target snook and tarpon. Uh, you know, they're bottling the mullet up with a mullet run for the next couple of months, so that's a nice walk you can take. You can do the same thing in Fort Pierce Inlet with a snook and tar tarpon. They gang up to feed on the outgoing tide. And the flounder fishing could be red hot this month at the Spur Jetty on the south side of the inlet. And then there's 
Normandy Beach to the south and North Beach to the north are great spots for snook this time of year. So, you know, just need to get an early start and for a swimming plugs or live mullet, and you can catch your first legal snook of the fall season. Speaking of which, uh, you know, there's a lot of snook on the beaches and in the inlets, but the main crux of the population is starting to move inshore into the intercoastal waterway in the St. Lucie River. There was a big push of mullet in Fort Pierce Inlet earlier this week. There's plenty of minnows and juvenile pilchards along the shorelines of the other inlets to keep the fish feeding all hours of the day. Around the inlets and bridges, the fish are hyper-focused on the first arrivals of the fall mullet run. So anything that looks like a mullet is going to work right now. That means live mullet, topwater plugs, swimming plugs, and the larger soft plastics like a bass assassin dye dapper. Those are going to be your next your consistent baits for the next two months. And the lures will work best in low light and after dark. And, you know, live bait's going to be the key in the middle of the day. I talked to Captain Brent Bowman. He had uh, snooks of 38 inches on Saturday, and Captain Ken Hudson had a pair of slop fish on live mullet Tuesday in the St. In the St. Lucie Inlet. So snook bites on, guys. Let's roll offshore, Mike. Well, the trolling bites backed off some, but bottom fishing has really picked up the last week, particularly off Palm Beach, Jupiter, and Hope Sound, where the mutton snapper is starting to school up on the reefs. Now, the majority of those muttons are under 10 pounds, so you kind of have to weed through the small fish to get the keepers over 16 inches. And there's the occasional big mangrove and yellowtail snapper in the mix as well. And the fish are shallow as 50 feet of water, but the biggest concentrations are out on the reefs and wrecks in 60 to 80 feet of water. You just anchor up, or you can drift with Spanish sardines, cigar minnows, or bonita strips. And be sure to use at least 30 feet of Florida fluorocarbon leader, uh, particularly during the daytime. Mutton snapper are notoriously leader shy. The best fishing has been at night uh, for the guys that are anchoring up and chumming with glass minnows and frozen chum, and then dropping cut bait down to the bottom. <laughs> now the other bite, uh, you know, with these easterly winds we've had the last few days, the dolphin bites really picked up a bit. And it's not that plethora of little schoolies that we've seen the last couple of weeks. More, you know, quality fish in that 15 to 30 pound class. And the best action has been out a bit deeper, say from, oh, like 200 to 1,200 feet of water around any floating debris or stacked weeds. And we're starting to see the first push of finger mullet inshore, and they're just a great dolphin bait this time of the year. You know, you can throw a net on them, load up a finger mullet. There's also been plenty of Spanish sardines around the piers and the church rubble in Palm Beach County and around the 10A buoy in Fort Pierce. And just slow troll or drift with those live baits, or you can do a run and gun and pitch them out with spinning rods and anything that looks good. You know, the key right now, cover water, make the most of your fishing opportunities, and you'll score a dolphin for dinner. All right, Mike, let's talk about bass fishing. Give it to me. Well, it's, it's almost like the, um, I'm repeating everything every week, man. The, the bass are schooling early and late in the day. Only this week, Stick Marsh and Farm 13 Reservoir in Felsmere is a hot spot. Look for the busting fish on the south end of Farm 13, near the grass lines, as well as out in the open water. Where you find those busting fish, throw a chrome and blue lipless crankbait or a white spinnerbait with chrome blades. Topwater plugs are also working on those schooling fish, most of which are under three pounds. Then in the middle of the day, switch to a bass assassin tap-out worm in that June bug color, rigged either Texas style or Carolina rig, and then go deep with it, you know? Go to the same locations you found the schooling fish. You can fish Shiner in those locations as well. A lot of the larger bass are coming out of those areas later in the day, and they'll be taken by anglers are fishing deep. So, uh, you know, guys are catching 20, 30 bass a day, up to about eight pounds of best stuff. Middle of the day, out where the schooling fish were. All right, thanks, Mike. I'm, Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the Bennett Auto Supply hotspots from the East Region. Captain Mike says inshore, tarpon in the glass minnow schools on the beach at Vero Cove, live mullet, Spanish sardines, or chartreuse swimming plugs are gonna probably increase your chances. Offshore, blackfin tuna along the edge in 220 to 280 feet of water from Boynton Inlet to Jupiter Inlet. Live chum with pilchards and sardines. That's what's going to catch those black fins. That's what's up. Now let's see what's going on with Captain Russell Theron in the Northeast. Russell, when it comes to jetties, piers, and surf, you say your region has something to brag about. That's right, Lauren. We are blessed here in Northeast Florida to have some of the best pier, jetty, and surf fishing here in Northeast Florida. Now these structures and surf fishing locations provide tourists and local fishermen a large variety of fish like redfish and trout Sheephead, pompano, whiting, drum, tarpon, kingfish, spanish, bluefish, ladyfish, jackson, shark. Some of the top spot pier fishing is going to be down toward Flagler Beach Pier, St. Augustine Beach Pier, the Jacksonville Beach Pier, and the old A1A Bridge Pier here at Nassau Sound. 
Now, for years, the uh, fishermen have been enjoying the long jetties that we have here at St. Mary's and, of course, the St. John's River and the St. Augustine jetties are great for redfish, trout, sheephead, drum, and, of course, tarpon. Now, be safe, uh, you know, anchoring near the uh, jetties or crawling over these big rocks because, you, you know, you just want to be careful. Now, we have some great surf fishing here. Like I said earlier, some of our best surf fishing locations are going to be on the south end of Amelia Island and Little Talbert Island. The North Volano Beach near the gate station on A1A, uh, north and south side of the inlet in St. Augustine, and the north and south side of the Matanzas Inlet. Uh, and just about all of the beach along Flagler is very, very good surf fishing. Now, another great spot that I can't leave out, and that's Guana Dam. It offers a variety of fish for everyone. Now, staying in shore, I want to report we've been having some really good flounder fishing this fall. Uh, we've got large tides coming this weekend with strong currents. And that's great for the doormat flounder fishing. And, uh, you know, this is the, during the fall is one of the best times of the year to target the big flounder during the mullet run here in our region. Now, they're feeding up before they move offshore, you know, for the winter. The best fishing for the flounder are doing the moving current fish in the eddies and near structure that slows the faster moving uh, current. Now look for locations just like the outside west fender of the Mayport Ferry near the Little Jetties on the south side of the Intracoastal Waterway in the St. John's. <clears throat> Those are great places to target the, uh, the flounder. Now the mullet run is in full swing right now, so be sure to cast net some finger mullet to use for bait. Now you want to target the flounder in 6 to 12 foot of water with a 3 8 or a half ounce hookup jig head tipped with a fingerling mullet. Or you can rig it with a 3 8 ounce slip sinker on a Carolina rig and a VMC flounder hook into the nose of a bad boy uh, flounder mullet, I mean a uh, fingerling mullet. And uh, don't forget, the state record flounder comes from our region up here. And I like my flounder fried whole and stuffed with blue crab. <laughs> Typical flounder is going to run anywhere from one to four pounds. All right, there, Rusty. Go ahead and take me offshore. Yes, sir. Rick, we've had some, uh, some. it's been kind of rough here lately with the water uh, seas, you know, three to four foot. I talked with Captain Steve Hare here in Fernandina Beach, and he said the sea conditions had been pat rough through the past week and that no one had really made any long runs to the ledge. Most of the charter boat captains have been focusing on the nearshore artificial reefs racks and live structures in 65 to 110 foot of water to catch sea bass. Uh, Captain Steve said that the sea bass have been plentiful and they've been fun to catch. Large sea bass can eat live bait, but uh, the bait of choice is going to be a cut stick armenter, Spanish sardine, or squid. Now also, uh, and typical size of those sea bass have been running anywhere from a half to three pounds. Also, the Vermilion Snapper. Captain Steve said the Vermilion Snapper, also known as the Beeliners here to our locals, are very plentiful in some of the same locations that are catching the sea bass in 65 to 110 foot of water. You want to use small cut baits like cigar minnows and, of course, Spanish sardines, or you can use a whole shrimp. I also asked Captain Steve about the grouper bite, and uh, he said that they've only been catching a few lately. Typical size of the B-liners are going to run anywhere from a half to two pounds, Rick. All right, thank you so much, Russell. We're going to go ahead and get to the strike zone hotspots from the northeast region. Captain Russell says inshore, target the flounder on the bottom, four to 12 feet of water. In an eddy, use a hookup jig head tipped with a fingerling mullet, just like he said. And then offshore, catch a sea bass over the reefs, wrecks, and live bottom, 65 to 110 feet of water. Best baits are going to be cut sardines or cut cigar minnows and squids. You know, the one place Captain Russell's not rusty, or Captain Theron's not rusty? Where is that? In the kitchen. Nope. You can I laugh hear. later. <laughs> All right, when we return, we'll check in with Captain Pat the Van Handel, and we have a special guest here on the show to show you the products at the workbench. Stay right where you are. I butchered it. It was supposed to be Captain The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by CCA, the voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hookup lures, premium lures for serious anglers. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. 
and Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium brand boats. Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Hi, I'm Ariana. I'm Natalie. Of, of the, the Miami, Miami Dolphins cheerleaders for Bennett Auto, Auto Supply. Supply. When it comes to spark plugs, look to NGK, the world leader in spark plug technology. NGK makes spark plugs for virtually every automobile, motorcycle, marine, and small engine application. With NGK spark plugs, you get improved performance and increased fuel economy. So just ask your local technician for NGK spark plugs, the leader in spark plug technology, available at Bennett Auto Supply. Best parts. Best prices. Bennett, Bennett Auto, Auto Supply. Supply. He's a 20 year straight, get to work on time. He's a love one woman for all his life Everybody knows he ain't just tough He's strong The all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado Strong for all the roads ahead Hey, welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're here at the Jägermeister Workbench talking about new products, and we brought Carrie Conradi from Olakai in to tell us about Olakai. What does Olakai mean, Carrie? Well, Olukai is made up of two Hawaiian words. Olu means comfort, and kai means ocean. And when you put those together, that's the concept for the brand. Now, let me ask you something. You guys have the bone hook and as part of your logo. What is the bone, the significance of that? Uh, the bone hook is the traditional Polynesian symbol for safe passage over water, uh -huh. strength and good fortune, worn by surfers, fishermen, um, and, and general um, all around watermen. And that, that's cool stuff. Now, Carrie, tell me what makes Olakai footwear so special? Well, we really build the shoes from the ground up. Um, starting with the outsoles, all non-marking. So they don't make any black streaks on your, on your boat? Absolutely not. Perfect. Perfect. And then the key to Olakai is comfort. Um, we start with a molded midsole, which, mm -hmm. which is contoured for the bottom of your foot. Uh, we built our shoes to emulate the feeling of your bare feet in wet sand. Right. The bottom of your feet are not flat. They have that curvature. So when you're in that sand, you have that natural arch support, cupped heel, and a wider foot bit. Uh, we bring that into the sandals as well as our closed toe shoes. Mm -hmm. All of our shoes have a removable footbed, has that same contour um, built in for that natural comfort. All right, now Carrie, you know what? There's no doubt there are quality shoes. Is there any warranty that comes with Olakai's? Absolutely. All of our products feature a one-year warranty from the moment you purchase. All right, so if we're not sure where our local dealer is or we want to see all the different styles and colors that Olukai makes, how do I find out more about that? Uh, the best location is on our website, olukai.com. You find a dealer locator. Um, you see the entire range of products as well as um, learn about the history and heritage of the brand. You know what? You did a great job. Don't go anywhere because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some cool stuff awesome. with you. And you know, Bass Assassin Carry, just like Olakai, is one of our sponsors, and they've come out with a new bait. It's called the Elite Shiner. Now, one of the things that I've seen happen in just the last couple months with Robin from Bass Assassin Carry is that he's come up with a way to make a lot of these baits translucent. So whether it's this new Elite Shiner with this thin blade and the paddle tail, or whether it's the traditional five inch sea shad, I mean, uh, jerk bait, look at how translucent it is. Now guys, the reason why I feel that this is really important is simple because if you look at a shrimp, in a lot of cases, Carrie, that shrimp is going to be clear. Mm -hmm. It has a translucent area. So when that fish is silhouetting, 
he can really see a huge difference and that it looks a whole lot more natural. This is something that's just happened with Bass Sass and they got all kinds of new cool colors. They got the Ripper, they got this one called the uh, Wack Assassin, we got all kinds of neat colors. But the key is that now we've got this, air, this ability to be able to, to um, uh, show this translucent area. Now the other thing guys, we are talking about piers, we're talking about jetties, and we're talking about fishing bridges in the Florida Keys. So I thought it was really appropriate, Carrie, to bring in a dock cart. And what this basically means, it's a, it's a cart that we would use to put our Yeti cooler in because you gotta have a cool drink. You might have to walk a half a mile if you're on Long Key Bridge, mm -hmm. you know, down in the Florida Keys. Yeah. But when you get there, sometimes there's not rod holders. As you can see, this cart has the built-in rod holders. But, you know, you can go to your local tackle store and for $7, you take this and hook it to the guardrail. Use some bungee cords or use some real heavy tie straps. And now you can add your rod by, and, and go ahead and be fishing. The other thing that comes to mind, Carrie, is that with this dock cart, you have a little deal for those guys who fish off of the beach. They can put their sand fleas in there and keep up with that. There's another style of rod holder that you get, a little cheaper, but the idea is that you can lock in your handle. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Kerry? I gotta thank you, more importantly, the, from the support that Olakai gives us. We're looking forward to working with you guys again next year. And Lauren, I'm looking forward to working with you next year, so that kind of locks you in. All righty, then I'm <laughs> looking forward to headed to the Panhandle right now, where we're gonna find Captain Pat Deneen. Captain Pat, you have quite a bit to tell us about tonight, right? Hey, Lauren, yes, how are y'all doing this evening? Great, let's talk jetties, piers, and surf. Yeah, I tell you what, we've got abundant access throughout the Panhandle for, for anglers that don't have a boat. And there's four major piers, one in Panama City, one in Fort Walton Beach, one in Navarre, one in Pensacola. Right now, the Panama City Beach Pier, they're catching mangrove snappers, Spanish mackerel, and a few kings. The Oakless Island Pier, they're catching whiting, Spanish mackerel, a few flounder. And this is by far the best pier in the Panhandle, in my opinion, to catch tarpon during the June and July tarpon migration. And then what I understand going on the best bite right now off the piers over in Pensacola. Every day, every morning this past week, they've been catching nice slot redfish using live alewives and then Spanish mackerel throughout the day. But if you don't want to pay to go out on the pier, the jetties in Panama City, the Destin jetties, the Pensacola jetties, all provide good fish for mangrove snappers, Spanish mackerel, pompano, bluefish, and flounder. And as fall approaches, the flounder fish and the red fishing and the pompano will be, uh, will be getting better in there and they'll be targeted there's plenty of beach access to surf fishing um, for surf fishing. Gulf Islands National Seashore and the state own a significant amount of our Gulf Front beaches, as does the Air Force. And the, the prize of the surf fishing is the pompano. And as I just mentioned, the fall run is approaching. But whiting, redfish are mainstays of the set fishermen. And if you're lure fishing off the beach, you can expect bluefish, Spanish mackerel, ladyfish, and sometimes bonita, especially in that October, November time frame. Um, also inshore right now, the redfish bite is going very well and should keep getting better. We've been catching a lot of upper slot redfish and larger, some up to 30 pounds or so right at the Destin Pass. The best bait is a live croaker or a spot minnow, four to six inches long. Fish right on the bottom with a Carolina rig, 30 to 40 pound leader, and four to five odd BMC circle hook is the way to rig them. The best bite is the beginning of the beginning or the end of the falling tide. And we've also been catching some really nice speckled trout in that same area and four to six pound bluefish as well. And there's a photo of Scott George of Nashville, Tennessee. He fished with me Monday and there's a nice one, 18, 20 pound redfish he caught. That was one of many he wow. caught Monday afternoon live baiting at Destin Bridge. That's a real fish, dude. Good yeah, job, man. Very pretty. All right, let's go offshore. <laughs> offshore, Rick, the uh, blue marlin bite at the dumping grounds has been good this past week. I spoke with Cap Captain Jason Allmark of the Vengeance. And that dumping ground area has been red hot. There's a line running from near the nipple, south into the dumping grounds, and then turning due west near the northeast corner of the dumping grounds. And where that line changes from north-south to east-west has been the ticket. Several blues up about 500 pounds have been hooked. And if the blue marlins are there, they're there because there's wahoos and dolphins for them to eat. So all in all, it's been a good pelagic bite. <clears throat> also offshore, the trigger fish was one, probably one of the least gla or least glamorous fish we have up here, but also one of the best eating. And there's been a good movement of triggers onto the natural bottom in 80 to 130 foot of water. The best way to target them is cut with cut squid on a two hook two hook circle rig or two hook chicken rig 
with a small wire circle hook. Lower the baits towards the bottom, but stop short 20 to 30 feet up above the bottom. The triggers are running up to, and if you're lucky, over five pounds. And like I said, those are definitely some of the better eaten fish out in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, Pat, great report. Steady Eddie, just like always. I'm going to go ahead and get to the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Inshore, Bayside of Port St. Joe, Barge Canal, Black Drum, Flounder, Redfish on live shrimp, small crabs, and minnows. And then offshore, Dumping Grounds, which Pat talked about, and West, Find the Edge. Control the lures and baits for Blue Marlin, Dolphin, and Wahoos. Thanks, Rick. When we return, we're going to hear from the Southeast and Southwest, and we're headed back to the Keys to talk more about the most invasive species and what you can do to help. There's much more to come right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy, the Florida Lottery, Best Parts, Best Prices, Bennett Auto Supply, Contender Boats, Performance Through Innovation, Navionics, we start where the roads end. And Guy Harvey, artist, explorer, marine scientist, conservationist, and diver. At highway speeds, things can get pretty windy. That's why the Chevrolet Cruze Eco has active aero grille shutters that close at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics. With an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon highway, the Chevrolet Cruze Eco offers the best highway fuel economy of any gas engine in America. Always thinking of ways to give you more while using less. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records or time on the water with the family or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has masterfully captured the wonder of marine wildlife in his artwork. Now he's sharing his inspiration with the Florida Lottery by creating 12 exclusive images for the Collector Series Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Game. Featuring a top prize of $50,000 and a second chance opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate the beauty and riches of Florida with Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Games today. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Make sure you check out our website at the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.com where you can get daily reports from our nine captains. Also, if you'd like to be featured on our show, upload your best photos to our Facebook page. And if you'd like to be part of our studio audience, that's where you can get registered. Now, Rick, for a species that isn't supposed to be in our waters, the lionfish population has exploded into all areas of South Florida, hasn't it? Absolutely, it has. It has. It's so nuts. We went down for a closer look to see what we could see and also how we could help. Cool. The first lionfish reported in the, just the Florida Keys alone was in 2009, so that was only four years ago. Um, and since then, the populations have just exploded, and you see them on pretty much every dive you do now. They are generalist predators, so they eat a lot of different fish, anywhere from the, you know, the commercial grouper and snapper species to cleaner wrasses to um, herbivores like the parrotfish. Uh, so they eat everything, and uh, because of that. They're causing major declines in all of these fish species. Uh, another way in that they're harmful to the ecosystem is that they're found in all different habitats and all different depths. Anywhere from the shallow mangroves to the sea grasses to patch reefs to down to, you know, four or five hundred feet. Um, they're found everywhere. Well, there's a lot of bad news relative to the lionfish invasion. Their spawning activity, the lack of predators, what they're doing to our native marine system. But there's good news too. And most of that good news is coming from the dive community. And what we're finding is that divers can have a very positive effect 
on keeping lionfish numbers down. Uh, we like to say eat them to beat them. So we can, we can go out and locally manage their populations. We go out and we can remove them, we can eat them. They're not poisonous, they're only venomous. Bring your spears, you know, get your, get your eagle eyes on so you can spot the lionfish and, and help us get rid of them because we, we want to get them out of here and protect the reef. <laughs> That's cool that they can, you know, now give the divers something that they can really target when they're out plus a dive. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's really cool that I think that they got additional stuff to do. Well, like I said, it's it's helpful to the ecosystem. And as Bob Stokey showed us a few weeks back, mm -hmm. they're really tasty to eat. So why not? Why not get out there when you're diving and you see it. if you could help out in yeah. more ways than one? You're right. All right. Captain Jimbo Thomas is waiting for us in the southeast region. Jimbo, you say your region is where it's at if you're looking to fish off a pier. That's right. And I, I think they might even be catching lionfish off those piers. <laughs> sure Excellent. <laughs> it's just a matter of time if they're not yet. But, yes, if you want to go uh, fishing off a pier, the southeast region is definitely the place to do it. Because there's no other area in the whole state that the deep water is so close to shore. And then working from north to south, we have Lake Ward Pier, the Deerfield Beach Pier, the Pompano Pier, which is free from what I'm told, and also the Anglins Pier in Dania. Then they are also cur currently in the process of rebuilding the Miami Beach Pier, which is in government cut. And I hope that I got all of them, but uh, you can catch snook year round off all the piers along with the sort of snappers, grunts, and jacks. Those are the pure mainstays. And then in the winter months, we get Spanish mackerel and bluefish, and those are all common catches off the piers. And then you got the Lake Worth Pier and the Dania Pier. They're very close to the blue water, and they do catch sailfish even off those piers. Kingfish and cobias are not uncommon catches either. Uh, most of these fishing piers, they hold baits such as filters and sardines, and they can be sabiki'd up for free life or dead baits. So always bring a sabiki rod, as uh, those are popular bait spots. But there's lots of hangs and snags around all of these piers. So be sure to bring along plenty of hooks, leaders, and plenty of egg sinkers. You know, when I need egg sinkers, I put on a tank, and I used to go swimming under that pier in uh, government cut, and I would fill up a five-gallon bucket in no time. I'm still living off those egg sinkers. But uh, there's also good fishing around all of the inlets and jetties, although on most of these jetties, you risk your life walking over those rocks. They're slippery, so I wouldn't uh, highly recommend that, but I see people fishing on the jetties all the time. And then the Boynton Inlet Jetty, it's basically a fishing pier. And on the south side of Holliver Inlet, that's also kind of like a fishing pier. They both have concrete walkways, and uh, a lot of people fish off those, and it's not uh, risking your life getting on them. Uh, most of the most popular jetty and surf fish are probably snook and, and pompano. And you don't really see the typical surf fishing gear down here like you would see up north because you don't have to cast uh, about 200 yards offshore because the fish are generally close to shore. Now, staying close to shore, snook fishing has been excellent and it should remain good at least through the next full moon, which is next week. There's been big schools of snook in all of the inlets, but Lake Worth Inlet and Boynton Inlet. They've been holding the largest schools of fish. Now, most of the fish are holding outside of the inlet where you can fish them off the jetties or by boat. And on the incoming tide, when the water is clear, the school of fish can be spotted by eye or you can mark them on your depth machine. Now, live baits are the way to go, and whatever is available around your local inlet will work. Filters, herring, sardines, croakers, tinfish, those are all great choices. You want to fish them near the bottom. Also, jigs like a white hookup jig with a plastic tail bounce along the bottom that'll also get bites and the fish are being caught throughout the day on both of the tides but the late afternoons and evenings is when they're going to bite the best now offshore there's been a great wahoo bite going on in the 150 to 300 foot range there have been fish caught throughout the region but the area from hillsborough to point inlet seems to be the best at least in the last few days mainly due to the good blue water and north current that they've had close to shore up there. Further to the south, down like in the Miami area, there's been, uh, the blue water's been out to about, well, it's been green water out to 500 feet, so the blue water's been 500 feet on out, but that can change overnight as that Gulf Stream moves in and out. Uh, trolling drone spoons and sea witch and straight bait combos has accounted for a few fish, but big live base fish under the kites, that's been attracting the most bites. Captain Art Sapp of Native Sun Charters out of Hillsboro 
He's been tight fishing with live goggle eyes and blue runners. And if you can find find speedos or tinker mackerels, those are excellent baits as well. And then he's also been putting a weighted live bait down uh, about halfway to the bottom, 100, 150 feet down. And he's been getting bites down deep and on the surface from both wahoos and kings. Most of these wahoos have been in the 30-pound range, but I did hear of one in the 70-pound range this week, which is a quite a large wahoo. And that bite should remain uh, and even get better as we get closer to the full moon. Now, a little further offshore, there's still some good dolphin fishing. In the last few days, there's been scattered weed lines and big patches of sargassum weed coming through in the 400 to 100,000 foot of water range. There's also been some floaters mixed in that grass. There's been some birds working over the fish, and those birds have been pointing the fish out for us. The schools of fish have been in the three to six pound range. And they've been moving through that grass, feeding on the tons of bait that's been hanging around these patches of grass and around the floaters. But the problem with all that bait is that all these fish are full because they've been just eating like crazy and they've been very finicky. So what we've been doing is matching the hatch, feeding them what they want to eat. And so what we've been doing is dropping our sabiki rig under the weeds and the floaters, catching the small baits underneath there, which has mainly been the small blue runners. And then we've been using those uh, small blue runners for bait, and we've been pitching them to the fish on 20-pound spinning outfits. Also, I've noticed that the fish have been staying down deep, or, or they're not really showing up. We find something floating. We sit around it for five or ten minutes, which usually you come up to something, the fish are there immediately. But we've been sitting around five, ten minutes at times until the fish finally show. So if you do find something good floating out there, don't give up real quick because there are possibly fish around. They're just either staying down deep or they're not hanging right under that uh, debris. So hang around, float your live baits. All right, great report, Jimbo. We got to go. Got to look at the sports grill hotspots from the southeast region. Inshore, look for the snook in the inlets and off the beaches where they're eating live pilchards, herring, and croakers. And then offshore, fish the blue water with live baits rigged with wire for wahoos and kings. Now off we go to check in with Captain Ron Houston in the southwest. Ronnie, tell us what we'll find in your region regards to jetties, piers, and surf. Well, basically on the southwest coast of Florida, we offer many opportunities both for the boater and non-boater. As far as beaches, my whole region is well accessible all throughout the region, as well as piers such as the Naples Pier, Fort Myers Pier, Matanzas Catwalk, and Boquillo Pier. Most boat passes are accessible, and some are considered jetties due to the rock entries along the passes. Now, basically, most species that can be caught regularly or during migrations are snook, pompano, ladyfish, Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, redfish, black drum, drac crevals, and mangrove snapper. Basically, listen to my reports on a weekly basis all throughout the year. I'll give you a mention on what baits that we should use and what artificials we use. But basically, all throughout the region, everything is well accessible. Before I get into my report, a special mention, this weekend we have an event Saturday at a Bayfront Plaza near Tin City down in Naples. We had 100 active duty soldiers of all branches coming in for the take of soldier fishing as well as police and fire. 45 to 60 captains donating their time. Event starts at 9 o'clock for kids and family with a special weigh-in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Please support our military and make sure you show up. As far as the inshore side, snook's been the main focus since snook season's open. Concentrate right now, focus on the early morning, last half of the incoming tide to the first half of the outgoing tide along the beaches all throughout the region, especially for the non-boater. Walking tight to the surf line or fishing the first trough, rock piles and blowdowns has been the key. You want to concentrate on walking the edges of the beaches, looking at the troughs where you can see these fish, or look for small bait schools spraying or schools of diving birds to locate these fish in case you can't see them. Baits have been relatively simple. They include artificials such as the bass assassin, four inch shad, shads or paddle tails on a jig head in white, lime truce or root beer have been great colors. Also bucktails on white, chartreuse or brown. Also small lip plugs will work or for the fly guy walking tight to the surf and fly casting tight to the surf with these fish on the beach. Plenty of opportunity. Average size snook right now all along the beaches are 22 to 32 inches. As far as the offshore, we'll keep it simple, especially with the weather we've been having. The snappers, there's still plenty of opportunity with the moderate weather to fish most artificial reefs from Gordon's Pass to Redfish Pass for mangroves and lanes. You can also go down a little further and concentrate on fishing some of the ledges. 
relatively simple to catch these fish, especially for the kids and the family. Tell me to locate these fish simply. Once you get them located, small cut baits such as shrimp, squid, pelicans, and herring will work. Catching a limit should not be a problem. Also, the red groupers right now, Marco to Sanibel, still from 25 to 45 feet along hard bottom and ledges. In the shallower depth, such as 25 feet, large lip plugs will also work. The colors for those plugs have been white or red and white, as well as white bucktails tipped with squid, as well as cut baits such as squid, sardines, or live pin fish. With the weather we've been having, both inshore and offshore, get the family out. Don't forget, please come support our military this weekend in downtown Naples. Ah, uh, sounds like a great event, Ronnie. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Southwest Region hotspots. Inshore, redfish, late in the afternoon, low until dark. Rugula to Pine Island Marina along the grass flats. Look for the tailors. And then offshore, scattered permanent triple tail. Fish the wrecks from Lostman's River to Coon Key. Run and gun until you find them. When we return, Rick, we're going to have the Coastal Conservation Minute, and we're going to visit with Captain Jeff Hageman. Don't miss it, guys. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Reactor, the best built performance sports watch, period. Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Strike zone fishing. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. And Yamaha, reliability starts here. He's a 20 year straight, get to work on time. He's a love one woman for all his life. Everybody knows he ain't just tough, he's strong. The all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has masterfully captured the wonder of marine wildlife in his artwork. Now he's sharing his inspiration with the Florida Lottery by creating 12 exclusive images for the Collector Series Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Game, featuring a top prize of $50,000 and a second chance opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate the beauty and riches of Florida with Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Games today. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. You already know about the La Jolla Resort in Isla Morada, so let's talk about the La Jolla experience. With an on-site boat ramp, the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic is just minutes away. And when you return from fishing, there's barbecue pits to cook your catch while your family enjoys the pool or one of our new remodeled rooms. This historic resort, the La Jolla, is family owned and operated and has a friendly staff ready to make your La Jolla experience a really great one. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender boats, performance through innovation. Coast of Conservation Minute is about fish and fish that are very spooky. And when that happens, guys, more often than not, what we need to do is downsize. So let's give you a good example. The typical bass assassin that we use starts off as a five inch jerk bait. All right, but what we've found is as the fish become more educated, more spooky, you might want to downsize. Look at the difference in this four inch sea shad. 
even if the fish even become more spooky, look at the two differences in die dappers. A three and a half inch die dapper, very small silhouette versus the typical five inch die dapper. Now we found that whenever we're fishing tarpon on the ocean down in the Florida Keys, we might go to fish uh, flies that are the size of bonefish flies. So these are some good examples. When you got fish that are very difficult, go down in size. Also downsize your leaders. Three quarter ounce gold spoon, very popular fish, I mean a bait to catch snook and redfish on. But you can actually even go down to either a quarter or a sixteenth ounce and you'll find that you'll get more bites when the fish are very spooky. That's today's Costa Conservation Minute. You know what you have to remember Lauren is that big fish will eat something small and also small fish eat something small. Sometimes we use too big a bait and the small fish we eliminate them from biting. Right, so why not Head your bets and look out for everybody. That's it. All right, now we're going to go to the Yeti Northwest region where we have Captain Jeff Hageman. Now, Jeff, we hear you have one of the biggest piers we in your do. region. We do. <laughs> the Sunshine Skyway is one of the one of the bigger ones in the region. Um, it it spans from Sarasota all the way over to Tampa Bay. You can catch a lot of fish off of it. Um, anything from trout, redfish, snook, even kingfish. Uh, sailfish have been caught inside the bay and off the bridge. So there's a lot of fish out there that you can catch off of it. Grouper, snapper, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Um, it's pretty deep. There's the, the, the shipping channel runs right through the middle of it. So there's a lot of fish to be caught and a lot of fish to be had. There's a lot of places to wade in my region too. Um, I do suggest getting a good pair of wading shoes. We've got a lot of oysters and a lot of rocks in my region. So you want to be protected and protect your feet from all those sharp objects under there. But it's a great way to get out there. You don't have a boat and fish from the shore or fish from a bridge or, or fish from wading. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot to be had in our region. All right, speaking of wading, what's your next species? Scallop season is about to close. We've got a little bit longer to go. There's still plenty of them out there. Um, limits are still being caught really, really easy. From what I've been told, it's been really good, really shallow. So most of the crew, most of the boats out there and most of the fleet has been a little bit deeper. You want to work inside them and get away from the pack and work that one to three foot. You can almost wait it and get out there and remember to fly those dive flags. But we got until the 24th, so it closes. There's still a lot of scallops out there. Limits are being caught in anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. So it's still really easy. Get those dive flags out there and uh, have some fun before the 24th closes it off. Now the water's warm, Jeff, so obviously people love to dive, but ask, let me tell you, offshore, is that hurting the offshore fishing or helping? It's, it's doing a little bit of both. It depends on the region you're in, in my region, because my region is so big. Mm -hmm. The northern part of my region right now, and anywhere from 50 to 90 feet of water, the grouper fishing has been really good. And you get down to the southern part of my region, and they're still a little deeper because the water temperature is still a little hotter. That one, that 70 to 120 has been the area the grouper have been in right now. You want to fish with pinfish or pigfish or cut sardines on a standard bottom rig. You want to use a heavy, heavy, heavy outfit right now because a lot of fish are rocking up from what I've been hearing. There's some big fish out there right now, so you want to have a heavy gear, pull those big fish out of the rocks. But uh, most of the fish right now have been averaging anywhere from 7 to 12 pounds, which is some good grouper, up to 15 to 20 pounds. So you want to have that heavy stuff out there. While you're out there, the sharks right now have been thick throughout the whole entire region. Um, you want to look for them anything. Anything that's got structure right now or bait on it right now, the black tip and spinner sharks have been anything from 60 feet, on, 60 feet of water and out. And there's been a ton of them out there. Just take a little bit of chum with you. Fill up a five-gallon bucket when you're catching bait first thing in the morning. Take that out there with you. Put a chum bag out. Start throwing some chum over, some deads over, and start throwing some lives over. You can bring them right off the wreck, right up to the back of the boat, and right on the surface. It's a great thing to do on fly, too. You can, you can actually catch a lot of these sharks right now and catch a bunch of them. But there's spinner sharks and black tips out there in, in a super abundance right now. A little bit of wire leader is all you need, a four-out hook, a uh, circle hook and a lot of chum. I'm going to bring them right, the, right to the back of the boat. All right, good report, Jeff. I'm going to go ahead and get to the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. In shore, 
Redfish bite throughout the region remain strong on the top of the tide and using cut bait. And then offshore, grouper in 70 to 120 feet of water over the rock piles and ledges, pinfish and sardines on the standard bottom rig is gonna catch those groupers, Lauren. A lot of good reports tonight, Man, as usual. Good show, the the Florida Keys always delivers. Absolutely, you guys stick around because when we come back, we're gonna tell you what we've got next week. For over 30 years, Guy Harvey has masterfully captured the wonder of marine wildlife in his artwork. Now he's sharing his inspiration with the Florida Lottery by creating 12 exclusive images for the Collector Series Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Game, featuring a top prize of $50,000 and a second chance opportunity to fish with Guy Harvey himself. Celebrate the beauty and riches of Florida with Guy Harvey Scratch-Off Games today. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. At highway speeds, things can get pretty windy. That's why the Chevrolet Cruze Eco has active aero grille shutters that close at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics. With an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon highway, the Chevrolet Cruze Eco offers the best highway fuel economy of any gas engine in America. Always thinking of ways to give you more while using less. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. Hi, I lost a big fish earlier today. Wasn't using suffix. <laughs> it was uh, about this big. Look, slow down there, cowboy, okay? A fish in the lost of him, huh? You want your fish. Sorry, honey, that fish is gone. Always use the best line, suffix 832. Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a paw and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. If you like fishing or the history of fishing, then I have a must-see place for you. The IGFA Fishing Hall of Fame and Museum in Dania Beach. What makes the IGFA so cool is that they have theaters where you can learn about the journey of fishing, galleries where the kids can see antique reels or catch a big one. The Hall of Fame room has over 140 beautiful fish mounts and maybe in the E.K. Harry Library, you may see a live alligator. For more family fun, go to IGFA.org. For a huge selection of fishing boats and family cruisers, don't miss the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Now with an expanded display of boats under 45 feet, plus the latest marine gear, electronics, and everything for the water. Five days of live music, great food, cocktails, fashion shows, fishing seminars, dive shows, and kids' fishing activities. The Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, October 31st through November 4th. Get your tickets early at showmanagement.com. Next week, our theme is Red Snapper. Make sure you check us out next Thursday, September 19th. You can also catch repeats on Friday and Saturday. As always, just visit Sun Sports and your local listings for more details. Now, Andy, we do have some sad news. We lost one of the pioneers of inshore and offshore fishing in the Florida You're Keys. absolutely. George Hommel, he's a legend in the Florida Keys. He guided President Bush and so many other luminaries. George, we're gonna miss you very much. You know, what else he did is he was the founder, guys and gals, of Worldwide Sportsman, which now is owned by Bass Pro exactly. Shops. And George, Andy's right, we're really gonna miss you, but you thank you for everything you did. Absolutely. All right, so what else well, do we I, have? Well, you know something? We're going to end the show tonight. We've got our conch shell, and we have <laughs> our conch shell blowing contest competitors right here. We have Ray and we have Cindy. Ladies first. Cindy, right. go Let's for see it. What Come, you on. Got, Come on, Cindy. Up here, Cindy. Here we go. Take God, a deep I have to breath. Look in the camera. You, no, can, you don't. You just, just go just ahead. Blow it. Let's Let's do it. Do don't be nervous. Best. All right, come on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Come on. You can do better. One more time. One more time. One more time. Take a deep breath and blow hard. Okay, I heard, we gotta I get heard Ray. 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 I heard, I heard Ray. something. I heard it. Ray. Right. Wait, okay. one more time. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. There you go, Ray, buddy. Okay, Ray, Ray's gonna win this Conk Republic flag flown over the Conk Republic capital, Key West. All right, Andy, I got a couple more questions for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank Don't go anywhere. Stay safe. right here. Yeah, Andy, no, you go to the Florida Keys. Tell me quickly the must see 
things, whether it's Key Largo, Isla Mirada, any of the five regions. Tell Everything. Me. Key Largo, Isla Mirada, Marathon, Big Pine Key in the Lower Keys, Key West. Each area has its own specialty. So but the Florida Keys are a fabulous destination. No <laughs> doubt. But tell me what sticks out in your mind about each one of the regions. Well, I'll Talk, tell you starting something. with Key Largo. Okay, Key Largo, diving. Ala Mirada, sport fishing capital of the world. Marathon, great for the family vacation. Also, great for the, for the person that wants to see all the keys. Big Pine, the lower keys, an eco paradise. Kayaking tours, Luke Key National Marine, uh, Luke Key Reef, part of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Key West, Ernest Hemingway, art, culture, food, and great fishing too. All right, now we're going to start at Key West. We're going to work our ba way back north. Tell me your favorite. I don't want to get you in trouble uh -oh, don't here. Don't get me in trouble here now. Favorite right? hotels. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I oh, can't do that. Okay, okay well, they're I'm gonna, all fabulous. I'm going to tell you one of the ones I like in, I, I in, in Key West. Okay. Sunset Key. Sunset Key is very nice. Little very Palm nice. Island. Lower keys, big pile right. of lower keys. Okay, and as we move further north, certainly the La Jolla, my home, away from home. Isla Morada. Right. And Isla Morada, for sure, you have the Chica, but then north of there, you have the, the Westin, right? But you forgot the Marathon area. What about Marathon? I don't know anything about it. You're going <laughs> to teach me. <laughs> we'll do that next time. Thanks for time. coming, Andy. Guys, thank you for you watching. Thank you for See being you. here, Andy. Okay. Bye, guys.